Hello Targar friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it's time for another Orc Mode Workout and today was max effort. Good morning day. A lot to talk about here and not a lot of time to get it done. I'm going to have to cover this over the course of a lot of vlogs but a quick reminder for those of you who watch these every day please click like down below. Help me keep the likes higher than the dislikes. Come on guys, I'm getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Throw me a like and help a brother out. Okay, not asking that much. It really isn't. Just reach down there and click it. So I started doing these having no idea what I was going to hit. I had no clue. I've never done a heavy single on a good morning. I did some heavy triples many, many, many years ago, but trying to extrapolate that over right now, mm, too hard to do. So I just started ramping. As you guys see, I set up straps and some of you were like, oh yeah, I've seen a lot of the spud straps. Guys, um, I've worked at, as an industrial mechanic before. I'm pretty familiar with rigging. It's way cheaper to just make your own rigging. And this, my rigging that I have set up here will hold way over a thousand pounds. Like it will take more weight than the rack can. So we're good. So I use rigging for this to set my bottoms. Um, and a few people have kind of said, hey, you know, is this dangerous? No, it's not dangerous. And as other people pointed out in there, I deadlift over 600 pounds and I do enormous amounts of reverse hypers. My low back can handle it. Uh, some people are like, should you be going all the way over? Lord, you can't. That's also where people mess this up, and it's something I addressed in the How To Good Morning video, and we start exceeding our body weight. And I exceed my body weight by 200 pounds here today, okay? You can't. You physically cannot do it. It won't work. You have to keep the bar barely midfoot or just a hair beyond it. There's just no way you can't do it. You'll flip over. So what we're doing is we're pushing the hips way back. And I started doing this and I realized, okay, 405, I can handle that. I can make one more jump. 425 was, was heavy. Felt my low back cramping a little bit. Not like injury wrist cramping. It was straight fatigue. And my low back is saying, whoa, this is a lot of weight. This is a lot of weight. Let's go ahead and stop. And that's the thing. I listen to my body. And I think some people pointed it out, and I'm glad someone uh, pointed that out there. They're like, Jason has his training pretty dialed in. He's probably not going to get hurt doing this. And he doesn't get hurt. He's in his 40s. He gets stronger and stronger and stronger. It doesn't get hurt. So my training's calculated. It's dialed in. We address weak links. We address all the things that cause injuries. Right? We address injuries very, very heavily in my training programming. But I got to 425. There's my baseline. That's what I can do on a good morning right now. Let's get to 500. Next, and is 500 going to be the stop? No. Having actually done a max now, and I feel the way it feels, and I feel the movement pattern. I'm very aware of these things. I feel the movement pattern. I understand now what Louis Simmons says by, if you get your good morning up to as high as your squat, you're never going to miss a squat like out due to good morning it. You can't. It won't happen. Now that I feel that he's right, some people will be like, well, it doesn't make sense. A good morning's harder. Well, not necessarily. No, it's not necessarily harder than your squat. Because look at the, the angles involved. When you start getting really heavy, you start exceeding your body weight the way you have to push your hips back. Your torso can't go all the way down. It's just not going to happen the way that you guys think. There's always going to be some torso angle. And watch any guy who does really heavy good mornings, even a lot of legit strength coaches and athletes. And I think you'll, you'll see it's pretty consistent. So, what do we do next? Ramp up to a heavy five rep set on deficit deadlifts. Now, someone said, didn't you say five rep maxes are dangerous in a certain context? Three rep maxes and two rep magic maxes are really dangerous, IMO. Oh, God, I said IMO instead of in my opinion. I think that's the most dangerous thing you can possibly do. Fives is a little different if you're careful with the form. But these aren't all out maxes. These just got to challenging sets right i'm really just kind of wanting to get to the point where i've got maybe one rep in reserve and it's weighed and measured notice with my reps i pause between reps reset there is no touch and go resetting controlling each rep perfectly and i ended up getting up to 505 on this this is a lot of reps because when you start factoring that in this is deficit work this is not just even a normal deadlift my deficit max, the best I think I've hit off this, is only 575. I failed like 600 when I tried it. Like, my regular max is 615. 
but you know what this this got it done this hit everything hard and this was challenging we did a, it's a lot of volume because those other sets count they're still challenging reps guys just because i went up 40 pounds doesn't mean the other first set wasn't hard and i wanted the last set to be really clean but we build up a lot of fatigue and this is is an exercise that we can get really good hypertrophy from now here's where things went badly i thought okay I'm going to wrap up and do some more good mornings. Let's see if I can get 315 for reps. My low back got even more fatigued from that. It was really fatigued. I got in this. I did two reps. Stopped and said my low back started feeling a little crampy. I'm like, okay, it's done. People say, well, crampy, does that mean injury? No, you guys have never gotten low back cramps training? Normal part of training, guys. But it is, in this case, my back saying... This has been a lot of novel training response. It's been a lot of uh, stimulus novel training stimulus, a lot of volume on, on the back, you need to quit. So I stopped. Was I strong enough to probably crank out five reps there? Yes. I think my low back was done though. And I'm like, okay, I wanted to get some good mornings in there, but uh, my erectors are just so finished. That's all they could handle. So let's focus on hamstrings and glutes and all this other stuff then. Because this needs to be hit. So what I was going to do today anyways. So we went over and added a heavier band. I got three sets of eight. Man, these lit my hamstrings up. This is the heaviest band that I've used really. And I'm on that a more aggressive setting right now. If you guys notice, my knees stay above the bottom of that pad. The whole pad at the base of those pads the hard piece i guess the wooden piece or metal or whatever it is my knees are above it so i'm coming down on top of it so we're, we're pretty much on top of the pads now and this is about the most aggressive setting i can do i can't even get up there if i were to i can barely get up there as it is i have no space to even put my leg between the, the pads and the rollers so i mean we're we're getting pretty aggressive on this thing uh and that band man eights were tough i got three sets of eight Hamstrings were lit. Also, my hamstrings are getting stronger, though. All right, the hammies are getting stronger, and they need to continue to get stronger. And, and this lift is going to be important for me. It's going to be important for me, especially doing the real wide stance box squats and everything. It's going to be my squats up, my deadlifts up. I think you guys are going to see some changes in the stuff I'm doing this coming week. That, if you notice, my head's kind of pulled forward because I don't have the band on good. I had it too high on my neck. It's making me lean my head forward. But it's a good thing I did some of that neck training. Make that a little more survivable. Uh, and I had to adjust it a little better after that. But three sets of eight with this. Hamstrings are lit up. Uh, so again, even though this isn't going to be an ultra high volume workout, there's a lot of tension being done. A lot of work being done. This was tough. But we got that good morning. And we'll get to 500 on it, but what's going to need to be an eventual goal? Let, let's be realistic. 600. I want to squat 600. I better get that good morning up to 600. And I feel good about it. I feel good about it. I think we can do it. And then because my low back had been cramping, I had said, well, what will avoid low back cramping? The reverse hyper. So instead of the 3 by 10 I had been doing lately, I went up to the 5 by 10 at 50% squat. Well, hair over 50% of my squat. And I'm doing them really, really strict these days. Like right now I'm doing them super strict and focusing on percentages of my squat. But the five sets of 10 was a lot more work because I have the recovery. I, I need the extra work because the other stuff was a little lower volume today. I mean, it was serious work. Those deficit deadlifts alone plus the glute ham raises probably gave me an actual hypertrophic response. Okay, that's actually pretty hard work. But this, with the 5x10, lets me get a lot of volume in. And at 50% of squat. And it made the low back cramp go away completely. And that's the beauty of the reverse hyper. That is why I have this thing. I can do stuff like that that totally pushes my erectors to the limit. And then this, because of the traction at the bottom, pulled that cramp right out. And it made me stand here and go, you know what? Had I just done a good set of these, I might have been able to, to do the good mornings. Maybe, but we're going to condition my low back to handle the heavy good mornings. That's what it's going to take. I'm going to have to get it used to it. And again, another tool in the toolbox. And I'm going to do it every three weeks. So we're going to run 
variations of the squat deadlift and good morning in three week cycles for max effort. Right? That's what I'm going to do because I've realized those heavy good mornings for where I'm at in my training are an extremely valuable tool. Now, the other point that comes up, people are asking more about the fives again. Some of you asked. You asked. No, I'm not saying that most of you should be doing that. How long did I do tons and tons and tons of tens? How long did I do like five by tens on tons of lifts? Five by 15, even four or five by 20 on some stuff. Like a year. I have built my work capacity up on very high reps. Now I'm going to switch over and focus on more and more tension. And we're going to keep high reps on certain movements. Especially stuff that needs the extra work. Like right here, reverse hypers. I do sets of 30 on the, all on my off days, by the way. Right? I do like five sets of 30 on all three of my restoration days every week. With half of this weight. But most of my other training volume is going to be like fives to sixes. That's what I'm going to do. I've already kind of explained this to get more tension in. Keep it all within the appropriate volume and get more and more weight on the bar on everything. All right, guys, so this is a great workout. So I hope it has been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.